Bienvenidos and welcome to all of my good friends from outer space. This is Crossbite and today we're going to be making an orcish alien monster schoolgirl or any variation that you'd like to make. We are going to kind of cover all the basics so if you are very new to Vroid this is going to be a great tutorial for you and our end result is going to look kind of like an orcish girl from outer space uh, who is also in a uniform. So we're going to start by looking at the clothing. You have a lot of different options for clothing. Most of them are kind of school uniforms. You've got dresses, you've got short sleeves, long sleeves, skirts, pants. So just choose what's going to be best for you. Because I'm going to be changing the skin color, I do want to have short sleeves just to kind of show that off. So that's what I'm going with today. Obviously choose what's going to be best for you. Next I'm going to go into the body editor and keeping in mind that I am doing an orcish alien girl I am going to kind of make her kind of uh, stocky I guess is the word kind of make her look orcish in the traditional fantasy sense so if you're familiar with Lord of the Rings or those kind of fantasy stories that's kind of what she's going to look like but she's also going to have elements of being alien so I'm going to broaden the shoulders I'm going to kind of bring in the arm length just a little bit. I'm going to give her some kind of fat fingers and slightly big hands, nothing too crazy. If you're new to Vroid, absolutely play around with all these sliders and get kind of used to what they do. One thing I will note, if you're going to make the bust size really big, you can run into clipping issues if you're going to do animation. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to kind of keep sort of a medium bust for this character. I usually keep them fairly small, but again, just keep in mind, if you're going to make it really big, you may run into some clipping issues when you get into the motion and animation. I'm going to give her a big waist and kind of a longer torso. I think that kind of gives a good orcish look, some long legs to go with that. So she's going to be just a little bit tall and she's going to have some big feet. I think that's going to be good. So we're going to look at the textures now. Uh, oh, you always get a default image as well as a layer when you're in the texture screen. You can always add more layers as you'd like, but you don't color on the default image or draw on the default image until you really know what you're doing. So I am using the extra layer that I'm given by Vroid by default, and I'm just going to color the whole thing green. It helps if you choose the mirror tool, which is the little two triangles up top, and I'm just going to absolutely color this whole thing in green. And when I'm done, I'm going to go down to the bottom right and use the composition mode of darken. And that's going to let those socks come back without doing any deletion or extra work. So that's a pretty quick way to get the clothing back if you're just changing the skin color. It's always good to use those extra layers because if you draw directly on the layers, you're going to be in trouble if you need to make adjustments later because you've absolutely destroyed that initial... Uh, picture I guess is the way to say it So always use extra layers when you have the opportunity Of course, I'm going to color in the face to keep it the same color. We want to have that consistency You do have a lot of options when it comes to the face So the mouth the eyes eyebrows eyelashes you got a lot of different options. So absolutely play with those Because she's an orc and she's gonna have green skin. I'm gonna just reduce the color of the mouth and I don't think any of these options are going to work for me, but I'm going to go ahead and look through them anyway. And I think I'll just reduce the opacity here. I just want to give her a darker mouth so that the bright red of the mouth doesn't contrast too badly with the green. A uh, quick trick here that I'm doing is I'm just taking these default images for the eyes, toggling the visibility. So you right click, choose toggle visibility, and they're literally invisible. So you've just got solid black eyes. If you want to have, you know, different color iris, obviously get in there and color them. But that's a quick way to just give you solid black eyes if that's something you're looking for. Keeping with the orcish alien look that I'm trying to go for with this character, I am going to kind of make her look a little bit angry. Kind of smaller rounded eyes. And pointing those eyebrows lower and inward is going to help kind of give her that angry orcish look. Uh, the nose is going to come up, kind of a piggy nose. 
Uh, the mouth is going to be very wide. I want people to be able to see the teeth, which we're going to get into kind of a little bit later here in the video. I'm going to give her those pointy orcish elfish ears. And I think we're going to round out that chin as well, just to kind of give her a big strong jawline. Mixing up that orcish and alien style. I think that's pretty good. Definitely looking out of this world. I'm going to give her a big head too, just to round it all out. So I think that's pretty good. So that covers kind of the face elements. We're going to go now into the hair. And there's a lot of things you can do with hair in Vroid. I'm going to keep it super simple in this one. I'm going to give her a really dark hair color because I like to keep my color schemes consistent. So just got dark eyes. I'm going to give her dark hair to kind of match that. And I want to give it just a little bit of kind of pop to go against the green skin. While being, you know, not solid black, but pretty darn dark. So there's a couple things I'm going to cover here. Procedural groups are going to be your friend if you're very new to Vroid. That's going to give you kind of a cluster of hair that you can adjust uh, in a lot of different ways. And it's going to adjust every hair in that group. So you can see I'm just kind of tweaking all these little sliders here. Please, please play with them to see what's going to be best for you. Um, but interval and number of hairs is usually going to be best for just about any situation. I'm going to spin these around and make them the bangs. And then that's pretty good. I'm also going to do the same thing for the back. So I'm going to absolutely just create the same procedural group. And obviously I'm going to make it longer for the back. I'm going to change the position so it's not in the front of the head. It's at the back of the head. And if I was going to burn, giving her a little bob, that would be perfect. But obviously I don't want a bob, I want to have some longer hair, so I'm just going to change the height. And I can see it's kind of clipping through the ears, so I'm going to just adjust my mesh here a little bit to bring it back. There we go, so it's not clipping through the ears. And I am going to add a free hand group just so you can get a little taste of what that looks like. Again, if you're very new to Vroid, the free hand group is going to be your best friend once you get really experienced with it. Today I'm just going to use it to give her some little flyaways. But the free hand group you can use to draw just any piece of hair you want in any direction. And you can manipulate it in a ton of different ways. So practice with that if you're very new to Vroid. I'm going to give her these little hairs right out the middle. Again, it's just little kind of flyaways, and they don't look great as it is. I do want to kind of really bring them into the middle. You can use the mirror tool to adjust your mesh in two different directions at the same time, which is great. And I'm going to bring everything in real close, kind of towards the middle and bring it up to the top of the head. And I'm not sure if it's better to add more hairs or just bring those to a point, I think. We'll look at both options here. So now I think it looks a little too messy with a lot of hairs up there. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. So we'll just use the adjustment points and bring them all to the middle for our four little flyaway hairs. And now she's got a little tomato head, which is fine by me. So I'm going to bring my procedural group 2 in which is the back of the head and kind of bring the hair just a little bit longer a little bit inward not too bad so we're actually gonna go ahead and start editing clothing you have clothing accessories and shoes to choose from you can see on the right side here that there's not a lot of options by default so I don't know if the droids intending to add more accessories in the future but right now we just have the tie and I'm going to go ahead and use the traditional kind of tie, like a Windsor look, and keep that a dark color. As I said before, I like to keep those kind of contrasting, consistent color schemes. So I've got the lighter green skin and I've got the darker green hair and darker green tie. I'll make a dark green skirt to match that as well. I'm going to give kind of a blue shade, which you may have noticed I did to the skin as well. And again, color on the layer any chance you get. Don't color on the default image. 
You can always hit that little plus sign to add more layers as you need to. Here I just want to show you um, how that looks. So drawing separately on the layer, if I'm drawing white, you can see how that looks. And then if I'm drawing black, you can kind of see how that looks. And again, the nice thing is I'm not messing with the default image that comes with that. So you're going to have that pleated skirt look. Or again, if you're doing the vest, you're not going to screw up the actual vest image. So I'm going to use that same layer kind of thing on the vest and I'm going to create a little logo because she's going to be an orcish alien schoolgirl. Uh, her school needs some kind of space logo I guess. You can draw on the 3D model if you like and you can also draw on the right side on the 2D texture. Whatever's going to be better for you. Sometimes I like to switch it up and it's also based on the perspective I'm looking at. I like to switch it up so the default brushes aren't too complex you only have you know a few options there but you can change the width and opacity of the brush so I just made some smaller dots within the big dot and I gave it a little planetary look for our space girl so feel free to play around with that the coloring and here I'm gonna look at the general editor which has a lot of lighting options most people especially people who do V-Road tutorials, don't like the built-in lighting and shading options. Um, I think they're okay. I'm going to kind of just hit every little slider here so you can get a glimpse of what they do. I like to have a little bit of lighting and shading. I don't think completely stripping it out is a good look, generally. Because for my character here, she would just look completely washed out green you wouldn't be able to see the contours on her face. It would be very hard, as you can see here, it's hard to see the nose and the mouth uh, and kind of the 3D elements to the character. So I think it's good to have just a little bit of shading, a little bit of light. You don't have to go crazy with it. And if you do max all these out, you kind of get the reverse issue. You know, it's, it's going to still look washed out even though you've maxed out all the settings. So probably not great to max it all out. Just my preference, you do what's going to be best for you. Again, I just like to have a little bit of shading, a little bit of light. But feel free to play with the sliders to get an image that you like. So the eye excursion probably isn't going to impact too many people, but the spring bone is going to make a difference. And that's going to be when the, you're animating. So if you go to the camera and exporter tab at the end there, and you go to pose and animation on the left, which I haven't got to yet, but I'm going to, I do want to get her mouth kind of orcish looking real quick before I get into that. But that's going to impact what your animations end up looking like. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm kind of giving her a wide open mouth so we can see the, the tusks I'm going to give her, the orcish fangs. Um, and again, I'm just kind of hitting these sliders so you can kind of see what these all look like. But you can manip manipulate all of the different emotions. so joy and sadness and surprise and anger and get a good combination to just get an expression that looks good for you. Uh, here at the bottom we've got the tooth options. I'm gonna go ahead and give her some fangs. Not the full mouth of fangs but just kind of the four fangs and I'm gonna give her the bottom teeth. Uh, the bigger fangs because again we're going that orcish look. So here's what I'm talking about with the pose and animation. Most of the time you're going to want to use a walking and running to kind of gauge what your animation is going to look like. So we're back at that that spring option and you can kind of see if I crank it up, the chest is bouncing a lot, the skirt's bouncing a lot. So when it's cranked up you're going to get that. Um, you probably want to be somewhere in the middle. And then that's usually going to give you a good, option, a good uh, kind of animation overall. If it's all the way down, you lose all that animation in the chest and the clothing so just keep that in mind uh, again we have more lighting options here this is in the camera and exporter section if you're going to be taking screenshots of your character and you want to get fancy with it this is a good place to do that the wind is good for when you have bones in your hair which we're going to get into later uh, we're not quite to that point yet you've got a lot of post effects you can mess with Generally, I don't mess with these. If I'm going to do anything in post, it's going to be in an external program. 
uh, Photoshop for still images or maybe Premiere for actual video. But you're very welcome to mess with this. You can get kind of uh, this comic look with this little manga style washed out black and white. You can get blur effects. So feel free to play with these if that's something you're interested in. The capture side is just the resolution of the image you're going to capture. Export is if you want to put it into another program such as uh, Magic Mirror or something like that. And then upload to Vroid Hub on the left I personally don't do, but if you're going to upload things to the hub that's where you're going to do that. So we're going to go into the body editor and I'm going to create a new layer. And I just want to show you that I'm going to rename these so I don't confuse them. So green skin, obviously for the green skin. And then I'm creating this new layer called spots and I'm going to use this to just give some kind of interesting elements to the skin. So I'm thinking to traditional sci-fi TV shows and movies how aliens usually have some kind of just weird skin texture. For this simple tutorial I'm just going to give her spots all over. And as I mentioned before you can color on the 3D model directly or you can color on the 2D texture side on the right there. So for example like I can't get up into the sleeve very well directly on the model so if I do want to color up on the shoulders I can just do that on the right side here. And that's great if you're going to change outfits later on or there's going to be wind and you're going to be able to see those things that are kind of under the clothing. So whatever's preferable to you you can color on the 3D model itself or on the 2D side. Either way as long as it gets the job done whatever is best for you. So I'm just going to give her all these kind of little polka dots all over the place to give her that space alien sci-fi look. I am going to hit the hands as well. A lot of people neglect that and they just kind of do the arms and legs when they're texturing or adding new elements to a character. So if it's important to you don't forget to hit the hands and the feet if you need to. And of course the face now just kind of looks plain and green so we're going to go into the face texture and go over to the face skin on the left side there and we'll be creating a new layer to give her those same kind of polka dots so let's go ahead and rename these so we don't confuse them once again and we got spots and as I kind of mentioned before I'm kind of just keeping in mind the traditional sci-fi movies and TV shows a lot of times they'll have those weird alien skin textures kind of go around the back of the head and kind of up to the sides of the face but the face still looks really humanoid and so I'm gonna kind of stick with that so just a variation of big spots small spots all over the place don't forget the ears just as the hands get neglected the ears sometimes get neglected so don't forget about those if that's something you need to include I think she's looking pretty good. I'm going to give a few more little dots and maybe some around the eyes. Also keep in mind the mirror tool if you want to do both sides of the face or body and if you want to make it more unique or asymmetrical, you know, turn that mirror tool off and just do as you need to do. So I think we're doing pretty good here. So we're going to go back to the hair and we're going to talk uh, briefly about bones in a minute here after I save this because I made a lot of work on this. So Space Orb School Girl sounds good because she's got, you know, her school uniform looking orcish and spacey. So I'm going to the bone tab here and we're going to go ahead and there's a couple ways to do this. You can create a bone group once you've highlighted them or at the bottom you can just click generate bone group and that kind of just does it all for you. Uh, it may not be what you want, so if you have very specific hairs you want to have bounce a very specific way, uh, don't use that bottom option. But here we go, just by default, you can kind of see from this walking animation that all the hairs are bouncing. And I did have the wind up a little bit, you can manipulate this X, Y, and Z axis to see how that's going to look. The more bones you have, the more flowy and bouncy it's going to be. 
and I'm gonna pull this in. I noticed that you can kind of see where it didn't kind of match up seamlessly, so make that change. You can also individually manipulate the hairs if you want to, or just continue to do them as a group. And the more bones you put into it, the better it's gonna bounce, like I said, and you can adjust your fixed point higher, lower. That fixed point is where that bounce is gonna start, essentially. So you can kind of see the right side of the head is bouncing more than the left. And that's because I've added more bones and I've adjusted that fixed point, so. Let's go ahead and figure out which group, it's not that one, let's figure out which group that other part of the back of the head is, and increase that as well. So I'll have the back hair kind of bouncing, and the front bangs are going to be a little stiffer. So there we go, the back hair is bouncing, front hair is good, and I think that looks pretty good. So I hope this was helpful for you, if it was, give me a thumbs up, if not, give me a thumbs down, if you got questions. Hit me in the comments, and I will catch you all next time. See ya!